Hello, uh, welcome to our session on hot takes for fintech. Uh, my name is Marielle Beasley. I'm a co-founder of Common Sense Lab, and I'm joined by my other co-founder, Kristen Berman. Um, we are behavioral scientists, really focusing on how people make decisions about money and uh, how sort of we often make irrational decisions. So we want to spend a little bit of time talking about how fintechs can build better products and services, kind of keeping in mind some of those irrationalities that we all have. So as mentioned, we're co-founders of Common Sense Lab, which is a behavioral, which is an applied behavioral science research lab at Duke University. And uh, we, over the last four years, have worked with hundreds of different uh, tech companies, financial institutions, employers to build better products and services um, through that lens of human irrationality and human behavior that then lead to better financial outcomes and financial well-beings. Um, we have, across our projects, we've touched millions of people in the US, and we have a few things that we'd like to share what we've learned. So we're going to do this as three hot takes. Kristen, take us away. Great. Uh, so your first hot take is that um, the paycheck is a wonderful, wonderful savings device. And a current trend right now in fintech is to provide access to earned wages. And this is great, but we suggest a little bit of caution uh, with how you actually do this. So why is that? So every time that you get paid, what happens? You can imagine a notification on Friday and you're excited about your paycheck coming in, but spending spikes. And so if you can imagine if you're getting paid every day, what will happen? Spending will spike a little bit every day. And it's not because we're bad people, it's we're, we just have temptation. And so we may go out a little bit more than we plan or buy something that we may not uh, plan on. And this is fine, except when rent comes. And when rent comes, you have a really large check at the end of the, or a really large bill at the end of the month. And typically you would have used your paycheck, maybe in full to pay that. But if now your paycheck is much, much smaller, you're forced to actually through the month have a savings habit. Every time that you get paid, you need to figure out how much you can spend and how much you can save. It's incredibly difficult for people to do. And we've actually made their world a little bit hard, actually probably a lot harder to make the bills that they have to do at the end of the month. So what can we do about that when we think about sort of, you know, as the field is trending much more towards Instapay and this access to earned wages and, and fintech is really thinking about how do we help open up that access? Um, I think a couple of the really important things to remember is, as Kristen mentioned, people sort of lack some self-control. And this is all of us. This is a, a, an aspect of human behavior. Um, and so really helping as people are kind of going through that process about accessing their pay and and uh, getting that that insta pay, um, making sure that as the fintech provider, you're helping create guardrails to help users think about when to access, how much to access, um, helping sort of make sure that there are pockets that they can really easily and, and you know, no, don't, don't just create the pockets, but actually actively encourage people to use those pockets to start putting sort of portions of every Instapay. Really think about that physical structure to help build that savings along the way. Um, and, you know, there's all kinds of things that different guardrails can include, um, such as limits on how much to take, how often you can take it, pre-committing to under what circumstances you'll take those, um, that, that, you know, that access to earned wages. Um, really be deliberate and how do you design that process? Because what we know about humans, um, and like I said, this is the case with all of us, money in hand is money that's spent. So um, now our, our second hot take is actually around short-term savings. Um, and this is, you know, I think one of the things that we know is that there's been some innovation in the short-term savings space. Uh, particularly when we think about emergency savings, there's there's been a number of kind of new fintech providers that that are thinking creatively about how to do this. But by and large, most of the current saving project products that are out there are really failing people. Um, you know, when we think about what's the most common way that folks start sort of try to encourage and automate savings, is by creating a sort of static automatic savings transfer that happens on the same time every month. So. Basically what this means is that you're trying to tell people to choose an amount to save, like $50, on the 25th of every month or on the 15th of every month. Now that might work fine for bankers who always know what their paycheck will be and always know when they're gonna get paid. But when we think about the millions of people in the United States that work hourly jobs, um, that get paid sort of by gig, that sort of their paycheck fluctuates, their timing of, their, of when they get paid fluctuates, and so it might not be that they know that on the 15th is a, is a day that they'll have cash in hand. It might be that their pay is going to be in one month the next day or, you know, in the following month, the day before. So 
you know, so that means a standard sort of way of automatic savings. That's just that that flat transfer amount. It just doesn't work with for people who have you know that income that varies paycheck to paycheck, and the timing of that paycheck really kind of lands differently. Um, and, it, and it varies either daily, weekly, or even seasonally. And so what that means is that people are really hesitant to sign up for that automatic savings. There's a real fear about doing it. Um, and you know, one of the more innovative uh, solutions that has been much more common that we're starting to see in this space, of course, is Roundup Savings, which is it's easy, it's attractive, so people actually uh, enjoy doing it. Um, but what we also know is that people sort of can then feel like, oh, I'm saving, but they're not actually making progress on that. And this is because Roundup sa savings simply isn't enough. Um, it, the average person has about 28 transactions in a month. And if they're rounding up to the nearest dollar, that means that it's on average about a 50 cent roundup, which means that high transactors are looking at maybe saving $15 a month, um, which as we know is often not enough for savings. Yeah. Um, and so the responsibility basically is kind of on all of us uh, and now is the time. So COVID, uh, puts a lot more pressure on families who are living paycheck to paycheck um, and having to make their dollar stretch more. Um, and and these types of solutions that actually are uh, aligned with how somebody gets paid and when somebody gets paid are in demand. And we just have to step up and start building them. So the call to action is if you are a payday provider, if you are a fintech, um, if you are anybody who touches money, uh, you could imagine rideshare apps. If you have uh, if you're touching money, how could you make this uh, easier for people to save aligned with when they get paid. Um, and I would say this is not hard technology. We're not talking about, um, you know, complex AI here. We're talking about generally maybe use a percentage versus a dollar amount. If it's a dollar amount, people may overdraft, right? We're talking about kind of understanding that what people's expenses are. Digit is a, a lovely example here where um, they're not going to take money if they don't think you'll have it in the future. Um, and we're talking about making it so that people can easily opt out. So one of the, and telling them that you're gonna take the money uh, before you take it. Uh, and so one of the you know key principles here is we want people to feel in control of their money, um, knowing that it, it may fluctuate and they may not have as much in the bank or as much slack. And so giving them a warning or a notification right before you're going to take it, and then right after you're going to take it, uh, also helpful. Again, really small things. We're not trying to say uh, drive uh, you know, personalization uh, or AI in ways that uh, we're reinventing the wheel. These are smart text messages at the right time and taking money uh, timed with when people actually have it. And and one thing that I would add to that is is that kind of when we think about that human rationality and, and why automatic savings is the truth is that most of us have great intentions. Um, most people would like to be saving more. Um, and you know, COVID has made that that really clear. But but people would like to be, you know, building that savings. They talk about it as a goal. Um, but if we kind of wait to the end of the month to move money over again, and, and we, we sort of have that be a really manual process, what we see is just people have a hard time meeting that goal. And so automation is a great way to make it easier for people to do it. But we need to make sure that automation is smart and it really sort of maps on people's real living experience and, their, and the way that they earn money. Yep. Um, and, and to pile on again, I think uh, just uh, all of you folks probably uh, know behavioral science research enough to know the essence kind of, of of doing anything is to make it easy. And really, the big win has been 401k, you know, automatic enrollment, um, where, you know, over 90 percent of people who are in automatic enrollment now have retirement savings. And if they weren't automatically enrolled, they would not have retirement savings. And so the main message here is to make it easy, but make it easy with timed with uh, people's people's paycheck. Uh, great. We are on our third and last final hot take uh, for us today, and this is about budgeting. Uh, and so this is a topic that gets both of us excited because we think that fintechs in general have kind of failed on delivering a budgeting solution that actually drives reduction in spending. Um, there's been an over-reliance on pie charts to explain what is actually happening with your money and a decreased reliance on helping people actually do anything. So a pie chart, in essence, is just telling you how much you spent last month or how much you spent last week. And this is generally backwards looking. And you can imagine that you're looking at this pie chart and you see this red number. How does that make you feel? <laughs> no, there's no good information in there. Uh, in fact, Im imagine that you step on the scale and you're not happy with the number. This is not an exciting moment for you. We call this kind of information aversion where we don't actually want to look at the number. Uh, and so we may not look at the number. 
and we could actually attribute maybe low engagement rates for fintechs. Um, if you're giving people information about their spend, they feel bad and then they just don't open the app anymore. Um, so backward looking budgeting fails for these two reasons. One, it's uh, it's just depressing, uh, demotivating for people to look at, but also it's extremely complex for someone to understand what they actually have to do in order to change their situation. So not only have we depressed people, but we haven't given them uh, anything to do about it uh, in, in the meantime. And um, we have yet to see a fintech really take over and own this space to help people um, actually reduce their spending. Meryl, so what should should people do? So uh, there's a couple of things that we can really think about uh, the ways to kind of revamp budgeting to make it actually a much more productive experience and exercise for folks. Um, and one is to kind of scrap that classic thought of how to create a budget. Um, and instead, really asking people to sort of commit ahead of time to, you know, uh, I guess, let me rephrase, um, rather than sort of that traditional budget uh, process of asking about how much do you think you'll spend in a month on eating out, how much do you think you'll spend in a month and sort of creating that budget sheet, um, really actually instead getting them to think about their spend in relation to their pay. So if they get paid biweekly, they shouldn't be necessarily thinking about their eating out on a monthly budget. Um, if they, and then similarly thinking about the frequency of those spends. Um, it doesn't make sense to have a monthly grocery budget because you don't go to the grocery store once a month. You actually probably go maybe a couple of times a week. And so then saying, OK, it's not how much do I have for the month? It's how much do I have for each shopping trip? Um, and we have some evidence uh, in, in sort of our, our exploration about how to do budget, better budgets that also is around getting people to commit to a number of times that they do something rather than an amount that they spend. So rather than saying, OK, I'm only going to spend $200 on eating out in a month, instead say, you know what, I'm only going to eat out twice a week. Um, this becomes much easier for people to track, pay attention to whether they're actually following that or not. Um, and on top of that, it really actually can can it, it makes it a little bit more concrete about what to do and they can track their own progress. But then you can really actually layer on some of those smart communications in the right moment to remind people and say, hey, it looks like you've had your one time this week. Remember, you only have one more time this week to help them stick to that budget. Now, that's really in sort of that communication space and that setup space. The other thing that you can do as a fintech provider is really actually help people manage the physical accounts to help them budget better. So taking budgeting from an on, like sort of just a paper activity into sort of that physical account structure. And this is really encouraging people, instead of just having a checking account that is supposed to serve everything, really actually helping people set up multiple accounts. One account that is more of their bills and subscriptions, that that's where they kind of set up all of their reoccurring bill payments or, or where their subscriptions come out of and their rent and, and things like that. And that they know sort of that those expenses are predictable. They can, they can count on them. They know when they're going to happen and they know the amount of them. And then have a separate account, which is really what the debit card is attached to, that is for all of those variable expenses like going to the grocery store, eating out, um, and then you know even potentially having that account refill on a weekly basis because that's sort of a little bit more in the time frame of how we can think about our spending rather than a full month. Um, so those are a couple of really concrete strategies on, on how to kind of move forward with budgeting uh, in a way that might hopefully actually impact spending and, and reduce expenses uh, and not have sort of that, that backfire that Kristen talked about where it could actually uh, just those pie charts that the really negative experience of that constant failure of, of sticking to your budget that, that might actually decrease engagement with your product. Yeah. So should we summarize the the three hot takes before we before we leave? Let's do it, Kristen. Great. So the first one was um, the paycheck is a wonderful savings device. Um, we uh, urge you to be careful as you launch any Instapay or access to earned wages. Uh, the second one is um, design savings accounts so that they are aligned with someone's actual cash flow. Um, make it easy, but also make it easy for people to uh, to save at the right time and the right amount. Uh, and then the last one is uh, let's reinvent budgeting. Um, let's make it so that it actually reduces uh, people spend. And the way we can do that is by moving it from a backward looking uh, mechanism to a forward looking one that helps them take action um, that they need to do in the next uh, day, week, month to, to meet their bills. Now, if you're interested in continuing to explore any of these hot takes and you would like some expertise from, from a team of behavioral researchers who spend all day every day thinking about this stuff, uh, I've got great news. 
We uh, take on new partners every year that we work with deeply. Uh, and these are a wide variety of different types of partners um, to really think about how do we improve their products and services with these sort of behavioral insights in mind to lead to some of these better outcomes. So if you're interested and you think that your product might be a good fit, uh, please do reach out to us. Um, you can reach us at Mariel or Kristen at commonsenselab.org. Great. And the social proof is that most fintechs have uh, applied to work with us uh, and, and, and a lot of uh, great ones have already done so. So uh, we're looking forward to meeting you.